May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our heart be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our Savior, and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus is about to do something amazing when we find him at the home of his dear friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, in the story recounted in the Gospel of John. The Gospel is the good news of God in Christ, but Mary and Martha are going to see that good news played out in a way they had no idea would be revealed to them. You see, Lazarus has died after a brief illness. His sisters, Mary and Martha, are clearly devastated. The siblings all live together. In a patriarchal society, it was necessary for male relatives to care for their female relatives. Women in ancient Middle Eastern societies were dependent on husbands to care for them. If they were widowed or unmarried, they were reliant on their fathers and brothers or sons if they had them. Lazarus took care of Mary and Martha. And now Lazarus is dead and the welfare of his sisters is in jeopardy. So not only are the sisters dealing with the loss of a beloved brother, they are also dealing with economic insecurity and possibly a loss of social status. The three siblings have known Jesus for a long time and they know who he is. They know he is the Messiah and they believe he is the Lord. Therefore, it is not surprising that they sent for Jesus when Lazarus Lazarus became ill. They wanted him there to be with them, and they held out a desperate hope that Jesus could reverse the effects of Lazarus's illness. They want their friend to extend his healing grace upon their brother. They want Lazarus to be saved. However, Jesus is delayed and does not arrive in Bethany, where Lazarus, Mary, and Martha live, until several days after Lazarus died. So the household is in deep mourning when Jesus arrives. The neighbors are all there to support the sisters in whatever way they need. They are also grieving alongside them. Lazarus must have been a special person indeed to have so many people grieving his death. His sisters loved him, the neighbors loved him, Jesus loved him. Everyone is weeping. Even Jesus, their friend, is weeping. It's a grief deeply felt born out of love. What is so special about this passage is that we get to see Jesus in all his humanity. Like all of us do when someone close to us dies, Jesus wept when his friend died. Jesus is grieving too over the death of Lazarus. He's not standing by merely observing his friends. He is grieving alongside them because Lazarus' death is his loss too. Jesus has compassion for his friends and understands their grief. Even though he knows what he is about to do for Lazarus and the sisters, Jesus does not underestimate the depth of their loss. He does not dismiss or minimize their feelings. He lets them grieve and be sad because that is what they all need to do to process their loss. He doesn't tell them to snap out of it or imply they are less faithful because they're grieving, grieving the death of a loved one even when they believe that they'll be reunited when Jesus comes again on the last day. Jesus is there for them. He is present to them. He is where he needs to be. At first, the sisters in their grief blame Jesus for taking so long to arrive. They believe Lazarus would not have died if only Jesus had arrived earlier. Even some of the crowd feel the same way after hearing that Jesus had opened the eyes of the blind man Bartimaeus. Surely Jesus could have healed their friend, they comment. Yet they also see Jesus' tears and recognize how much Jesus loved Lazarus. Perhaps they went easier on him when they saw how upset Jesus was, that he was also in deep grief. He certainly is not detached from the grief around him. He knows the suffering of Lazarus is over. However, he knows Lazarus' death is a huge loss for his family and the community. It's very real, and he is in it with them. He enters into grieving and empathy. He follows Martha to the tomb where, Jesus, where Lazarus is buried, and he needs to see it. And what does Jesus do at the tomb? Well, he doesn't hide from it. Like most of us when we visit a grave, Jesus prays to his Father in heaven. He prays a thanksgiving to God for hearing his prayer. 
He prays that the act God has empowered him to do will lead many to believe in God. Jesus prays for the faith of those around him whom are about to witness his life-saving act. And then Jesus cries out and resurrects Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus comes out with burial cloths still around his hands and feet. He is once again amongst the living. And Jesus asks the people there to unbind Lazarus since Jesus has unbound him from death. Therefore, the burial cloths are no longer required. Lazarus is saved from the bounds of death, and he is alive again, set free for eternity from death, and given life everlasting. And the witnesses present believe. And the word of Jesus' miraculous resurrection of Lazarus spreads far and wide, and others come to believe as well that Jesus came to save and give us new life. In this resurrection act, Jesus has revealed his divinity. He has revealed his purpose to save us from eternal death. He proves he came to save. And little does everyone know that the resurrection of Lazarus puts into motion a series of events that will soon lead to Jesus' own arrest, death, and resurrection. Lazarus' resurrection will provoke a backlash. And in fact, later on, some of the chief priests are so incensed by what Jesus did that they try to have Lazarus murdered, so the evidence of Jesus' power to save is destroyed. His glory, though, will be revealed in the resurrection, and the people will see he is the Christ, the Messiah, who came to save us from our sins and give us eternal life after our own death, so we can live with Jesus forever. The story of Jesus' grief over the death of his friend is very touching, and we see a sympathetic and empathetic Jesus. We see a human being who mourns for loved ones who have died and mourns along with other loved ones who remain. I know that gives me comfort to see this human side of his nature. It shows Jesus does not walk away from us who are in deep in our grief. Jesus walks with us, weeps with us, has compassion for us. Even though Jesus wasn't with Lazarus when he died, I think Lazarus knew Jesus was with him in spirit, and he certainly saw Jesus when he was resurrected by his savior, his friend, his brother. Before my mother died three years ago, we were not permitted to visit her in the hospital, apart from three visits over a nine-week period that I was allowed uh, because of COVID protocols in the spring of 2021. And when she died, we were not present. And this was very distressing to know that my mother had died alone. Yet after I had that moment of real sadness and regret, I realized that my mother was not in fact alone and Jesus was with her. Jesus saw her suffering, came to comfort her and was with her when she passed through the grave and gate of death to her joyful resurrection. That knowledge, that belief, gave me great comfort in the midst of my grief. Jesus reminded me he was present with my mom. And that thought he put into my heart was an act of love that helped me very much. On this All Saints Day, we remember our loved ones who have died and are now resurrected. They are among us in spirit, and they are part of the great cloud of witnesses that surround us always, not just here in this holy place, but wherever we are. They live on in our hearts, and they are not gone forever. They are with the Lord, and we will see them again. Jesus weeps with us when we are in mourning because he loves us. He participates in our grief, hears our cries, hears our confusion and shock when someone close to us dies. He reminds us we are not alone. Rather than rushing us to resurrection, forcing us to joy without seeing and experiencing the pain of real grief, Jesus cries with us beside the tomb and offers prayers on our behalf, reminding us that he remains the one God sent to give us life that overcomes death. Amen. Oh,